Hi students and welcome to the last week that we will deal with backend computing. This will be an exercise week, so we will not do any theory lesson. We have covered all we do this year in Entity Framework Core, in ASP.NET Core, with authentication and things like that. Today is just about exercising. Next week we have holidays and after the holidays we have our final written exam dealing with backend technology. After this exam, we will switch gears and move on towards different front-end technologies. I already told you that we'll do, like, do it like that. So this video is about introducing you to the exercise that I have prepared for you. I promised you that I will set up an exercise where you can uh, practice all the necessary skills that you need in order to succeed at the upcoming written exam. This exercise is a little bit longer than the exam that you will get in two weeks because during the exam you only have a few hours but now you have two weeks to work on this, this exercise. But from a complexity level our uh, exam will be rather similar to what you will see in this exercise. So let me quickly walk you through the exercise that I have given you. If some people watch this video who are not in our course feel free to do the exercise. And also feel free to ask questions. If you have some questions, you can contact me via email, Twitter, Discord, or any other social media platform where you'll find me on. But now for the students and in the HTL and everybody else who would like to do the exercise. The exercise is about a user management quiz. So you have to build a web API for user management. You don't need to start on a blank slate. I already prepared, I will scroll down a little bit, a starter solution. Let me show you the starter solution and show you around a little bit. I have opened the starter solution here and if, as you can see here on the right hand side it already consists of an ASP.NET Core web API. It consists of migrations and an entity framework data context. It is not completed yet. And it consists of a folder which is called controllers where you have to add all your controllers. So let's take a look at the startup class first. In order to practice authorization, I added a simulated authentication level. Typically in the course, we have used OpenID Connect and Azure Active Directory to practice modern authentication technologies. Of course, during an exam and the exercise, it's a little bit hard to work with your own Azure Active Directory and a lot of things can go wrong. Therefore, I added some simulated authentication here. So with this line of code, it's already in your starter solution. You don't have to change it at all. We simulate that a user with the name identifier foo.bar has signed in to this application and the foo.bar user is in the user role of the administrators. If you would like during working on this exercise, if you would like to uh, test with a different user, just change this username identifier and then a different username identifier will be simulated as being signed on. If you want to, for instance, simulate a user who is not an administrator, just maybe write here user and then the signed in user is simulated as not being part of the administrator group. Okay, this is about the simulated authentication. Note that the username, username identifier will be written in the name identifier claim. If you can't remember what a claim is, rewatch the video about modern authentication. We have dealt with that. And the user role is written in the claim called role. Now what about the existing data structure in the starter solution? In the starter solution you already have a user class here. A user consists of a primary key, the name identifier, by the way this name identifier aligns with this name identifier, email address, First name, note that this is not a mandatory field, it's an, um, it's, it's an optional field, and the last name, which is also an optional field. You have here the data context, which contains a set of users, and by the way, in this data context, I added one line of code to add a unique index on the name identifier column in order to make sure that there is only one, uh, one unique name identifier for each user. Last but not least, and then we are already through, 
I have written a small demo data generator for you. It's a small class here, demo data generator, and it contains only two methods, clear all and fill. The clear all method deletes all the data inside of our database and the fill method adds just three demo records, as you can see them here, Foo, John and Jane, to our database. It will be your task to extend this demo data generator and I will tell you more in a second. So how can you trigger this demo data generator? Well, pretty simple. If you take a look at program CS, then you will find that here I check the command line arguments. So if you would like to fill the database, just right click on the project, go to properties and in debug here in application arguments, just write here, fill. If you add this here, I will show it to you here. I think it's easier. If you add fill here, run the project, then all the data is deleted and just the demo data is, uh, is filled. Afterwards, remove the fill again and that will start your web API. So this is what the start to solution is all about. And now let's take a look at the requirements that you have to fulfill. Note that the requirements are here built, are structured um, around levels. You have to solve at least level one if you want to reach a positive grade. So this is not an exam, it's just an exercise, but it should be, it should give you some feedback where you stand. If you manage to, to, to solve level one within, let's say, two or three hours, then it's the absolute minimum that you need to reach in order to get a positive grade. Now, what, is, what are the requirements for level one? First, you have to extend the entity framework data model with groups. Currently, there are just users in the data model, but I want to have groups. Every user can belong to zero to n groups, Every group, group can have zero to n users. Last but not least, extend the demo data generator that I just showed you and add some meaning, meaningful demo groups. Okay, first one. Second one, design a web API controller for user management. You have to add an ASP.NET Core controller that supports the following operations. Get details about the currently signed in user, remember, the starter solution already simulates a signed-in user, foo.bar. You have to get the data from the database for the signed-in user and return a JSON object representing the user. Here you see the columns that you have to return. And the second API should list all users. Return a JSON array with all users or an empty array if there are no users in the database. You have to repeat the same thing for the groups. We also want to have a list of all groups, that one is trivial, but we also want to be able to get details about a single group. But this time I would like to specify the ID of the group that I want to get back through the web API using some kind of mechanism that you already know, maybe path, maybe query string parameter, that's up to you to design. You have to design the URL scheme and I'll have a tip for you for that. So if you manage to do that within, let's say, as I said, two hours or so, you should be fine to reach a positive grade. If you want to get more than just a positive grade, you have to fulfill additional levels. Level two. Level two means that I would like to have um, an extension to the existing web APIs for returning all users. You have to add a filter parameter, this is optional, an optional filter parameter. If it is given, only return users where the given filter parameter is contained in the user's email or in the first name or in the last name. Second requirement, add Swagger, also known as Open API specification, to the ASP.NET Core project. Tip, use this NuGet package to do that. If you can't remember how to do that, read the documentation. We have worked it through or take a look at the recorded video of the corresponding lesson. Level three. Level three is a more advanced data model because now I would like to have a recursive data structure because now every group can not just have users as members, but it also can have groups as members. 
So a group can be inside a group, can be inside a group, can be inside a group, and each group can have uses on every level. Every group has, that's a natural from that, zero to n parent group. To make it feasible, you can ignore loops. There will be no loops in the database. So it will never happen that A is a member of B, B is a member of C, and C again is a member of A. Such things, you can ignore them. They will never appear. Yeah. So you don't have to add any uh, detection mechanism or error handling for such cases. Just ignore it. Just simulate. That will never happen. Second requirement, extend the web API controller so that I can ask the web API for all group members of a given group. So I can ask the system who is member of this group and I get back the group members, not just the user members. I specify the group ID, I get not found if the group doesn't exist and I get a JSON array of all the group members if there are some. Last but not least, level four. This will be the hardest one. This is for those of you who want to get the best grade available. Extend the web API controller for group management. And now I want to have the user members of a given group. So I want to say which users are members of a given group. That is very similar to what you have done up here. But this time I want to have the user members. Nothing special here. The tricky part comes down there. I would like to be able to specify an optional parameter named recursive. I can set it to true or false. If I set it to true, I will not only get the direct members of the users to the group, but I will also get the indirect members. So if a group is inside a group, is inside a group, and somewhere down there you have users who are members to this child, child, child group, then I would like to get it back to. Let me demonstrate that to you based on an example. Imagine that you have, let me draw a little bit here. Imagine that you have here a group which is called all. Then you have a child group here which is called management. The management group belongs, is a member of the all group. Now in the management group, we have a user here. We have the user Jane. User Jane is member of the management group. We have a second user. We have a second user, oh, sorry, this one. This second user is John. John is a member of the all group. Now, if I ask the all group, who is a member of your group, then I will only get back John if I specify recursive false. But if I ask all for all the members, direct and indirect members, so recursive is true, then I will not only get back John, but I will also get back Jane because Jane is a member of management and management is a member of all. So you have to write a recursive algorithm going through this tree of group memberships and gather all the users who are member to all these groups. This is the hardest level and this is for those students who want to have, you want to get the best grade available. Now, if you do my course at the HTL, it is important to understand that you can earn extra points by solving this exercise. So if you manage to finish level three, you will get one point for your, uh, for your grade. If you manage to finish level four, you will get another point for your grade. Now I have some important tips for you. If you read my, um, my exercise here closely, you will find that there is an existing solution here. This is the final solution, but please do not just copy it. It doesn't make sense. This exercise is for you to exercise, to prepare for the exam. The final solution here is just for a situation where you might get stuck during a self-service, during a self-study uh, lesson at home where I am not available, for instance, then you can take a look at this solution. Or you can use it at the end when you have finished level four to check, to compare your approaches 
to my approaches. And if you want to get the extra points, I will not accept plain copies. So I will not believe you if you say you accidentally have written the same code like I did. I don't, I don't believe that. So I don't accept plain copies. I only accept uh, um, solutions which are, which are significantly different or where you can argue that you have really written it on your own. If in doubt, let's just talk about it, okay? If you have earned an extra point, if you think you have earned an extra point, notify me why I get a issue. This is for those students who are at the HTL learning. With that, I hope this exercise will be a great way of preparing for the upcoming exam. Please use tomorrow's lesson that we have together to start with this exercise. I am there to help you overcome any problems for the students who are in, uh, in presence and students who are in distance learning. You can contact me, I will be there, I will be available in Discord, I will be available um, in, in presence in the class. Then finish this exercise during Easter holidays so you are very well prepared for the upcoming exam which will take place in two weeks from now. Enjoy working on this exercise, I'm looking forward to your questions. Have a nice day, bye!